It's hard to believe that a pair of boxing fists could play something like this, although I'm sure he had the lungs for it. As I glanced at the telephone, I remembered the weekly password for O'Leary's illegal gambling operation. Even though I had rejected his reward for finding Yale, and had chosen to bet it all on stone, I had managed to make my own dirty money by ratting out the eagle pimp during our poker game. How much damage could another bet do? Yes. Wild strawberries. Welcome, sir. May I ask for the beneficiary of your bet? I'd like to bet on Sonia Dunn's behalf. Hmm. Event? Stone versus Yale. Madison Square Garden. Got it. Amount? Five thousand dollars. Winner? Yale wins. Place of delivery? I'd seen several locations written out in O'Leary's basement, but I could only remember one, courtesy of my new matchbox, La Iguana Pool Room. All right, sir. Good afternoon. I seem to recall Sonia being mad about the pictures, but who knows? ready-made meals on airplane trays in front of the TV. Who would have thought we'd end up eating like this? Dunn died four days ago, and that lettuce still looks okay. Of course. Now I see how Dunn bought the apartment he was going to share with Mary. This place has to be empty in two weeks for the new owners. I wonder if Sonia knows about this.
sardines. It's been open for a few hours. It's pretty clear that the burglar came by the house before heading to the gym, which means he probably didn't find what he was looking for in here. Another empty closet. You still looked at her every morning, so many years later, with a new love? Maybe we don't need to forget. Maybe pain just transforms into, I don't know, something. This is too private. Elaine. I think that was Dunn's wife's name, according to Jake. Is this how he got in? Wow. Could Dunn really afford such luxuries? Or did he only want to impress Mary? Could this be the origin of Sonia's interest in business management? What's this doing here? No matter how hard I look, I'm not getting anywhere. I need to talk with Sonia, and maybe with her uncle, Tim.
It brings back... I don't know. Good memories? An optimist, are we? It's like remembering the last day of summer. Scenes full of joy, picturesque landscapes, and yet the light is faint and the air is still, the calm before the storm. I know that feeling. I figured that much. I can see it in your eyes. We met in the army. <laughs> we were all professional athletes. They called us the Olympic Five. Who's the guy on the right? Angus Mitchell, our combat medic and a doctor with the New York Warriors. It was Spanow who got him assigned to our platoon. Hey, isn't that Craig Spano? The guy on the Morley's billboards? Yes, indeed. Our captain. He was the oldest, after all. And star of the New York Warriors. <laughs> he was an orphan, you know. But he loved the sport so much that he said baseball was his family. He was the one who had Mitchell assigned to our platoon. Who's the guy on the left? Ah, Victor Sukovsky the athlete. You've probably heard of his medals. What about you? I had just signed with the Milestones. I hadn't even played my first game, but people said I had a bright future ahead of me. And you did. The cop at the hospital sure seemed happy to be the proud owner of a Tim Ironarm Thorpe autograph. Who would have thought that I'd end up becoming Tim Iron Legs Thorpe? What happened? I fought the Nazis for two years, up there in the sky, over Europe. And I never set foot in a field hospital. Three years later, I crossed the street without looking. And look at me now. Was Dunn already boxing? Yes, he was. I had already seen him fight before I even met him. He was as humble in the ring as he was in life. He'd always let his rivals take the initiative. I remember how he barely dodged the blows. If you didn't look at his feet, it seemed like he wasn't even moving. And the footwork, pure dancing. You could almost hear the music. The song would play until his opponent was exhausted. Then came the drum roll, followed by Dunn's victory by K.O. What happened to all of them? Zukovsky died the same day the injured Dunn. Dunn received an honorable discharge and came home. He quit boxing and opened his gym. Mitchell was redeployed to a field hospital. Spano and I continued in the same unit, but nothing was ever the same. You see what I meant with the last day of summer. And after the war, well, who the hell cares? I do. What happened to Spano? Well, you've seen the billboards. He made it big time. When I was forced to retire, I got him some advertising deals. That's how I founded this agency. But then, something happened to him. He became sullen. He fell out of shape, and slowly but surely, lost touch with reality. He withdrew from public life and broke off our friendship. Haven't heard from him in, uh, what, three years? And believe me, I've tried to contact him. You think Spano might have been involved in Dunn's death? Spano? No way. He and Dunn were always... Well, Spano's changed so much that it's hard to say. What happened to Mitchell after the war? Mitchell? Who knows? We lost touch. I hope he's doing well. I think I saw Mitchell not too long ago, but I can't remember where. Seriously? Please try to remember. I'd love to hear from him again. I'll do my best. Allow me to double your wage. You have to find the murderer. Maybe Dunn stayed in touch with Mitchell or Spano. Maybe even with both. But he never told me anything. Maybe Sonia knows. I doubt it. But that's not the only question I've got for her. May I?
Yes? Sonia? No, she's not here. Who's calling? Where is she? You know, it's dangerous. Have you ever wished you'd never been born? What? Yeah, sometimes. Then we're both in the same boat. The first time was right after moving to New York. I hated my mother. She was the reason we moved from the countryside and the smell of freshly mowed grass to this dirty city and the smell of medicine. Her medicine. The second time was after she died. I hated myself for having hated her before. For not having loved her enough. The third time was when my father shut himself off. I hated him for that. For abandoning me. For giving in to the booze. Now he's dead, so... Take a guess. You hate yourself for having hated him. Yes, but that's not the worst of it. The problem is I don't know how to live without hating him. Over the last few years, everything I've done was meant to push my father far away. To avoid being like him. To avoid making his same mistakes. Without him, I just don't know who I am. <laughs> and you won't even let me hate Bobby, which might actually help me. The more you hate, the worse you feel. You think I don't know that? I need someone to blame. Without that someone, I have only myself to hate. I'll find the person who did this. I promise. Let me have my doubts. Although, you've already come so far. I'm sorry I haven't been a little more grateful. In any case, you shouldn't hate yourself. You are... No, you have such good qualities. You're kind, smart, and beautiful. Are you really trying to flatter me now? No, I... Seriously, I didn't mean to... Sorry. Anyway, can we just drop the subject? Did you go to my father's apartment? Yes. The thief went there before coming to the gym. Which leads me to believe he didn't find what he was looking for. And what was he looking for? That's what I intend to find out. With your help. I saw your old room. That's embarrassing. Stop, or I'll end up hating you. I found a baseball glove with Spano's autograph in your room. Oh, I've never seen it. My father must have put it there, although I don't remember him having a signed glove. It's odd that there are practically no toys or memories of your childhood in the room, except for a small music box. That box? It might just be my last happy memory. It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. I loved reading stories about pirates. So my father drew a treasure map for me. 
I search the whole house one clue at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a, a tire swing. X marks the spot, so I, I dug to find my treasure. I loved the music it played, the ballerina and the little secret compartment. Oh, the secrets I kept in there. I think it's the first time I heard you call your father, Daddy. Uh, really? <laughs> I'm also a fan of Frank Papalia. Oh, yeah, the poster. I only liked him because my father thought he was too modern. Your father sold his apartment. The new owners move in in two weeks. What? I'm sorry. I think he used the money to buy a new place with Mary Purnell. The letter you're holding explains the rest. I wish I'd had the chance to talk to her. I found a picture taken during the war. <laughs> the Olympic Five. Did you meet any of them, besides your father and uncle? Well, Uncle Tim actually isn't my uncle. No? He and my father loved each other like brothers. Did he tell you that he saved his life? Your father saved Thorpe? They were flying over Brittany in a three-unit fighter plane. Zukovsky was the pilot, my father was the co-pilot, and my uncle manned the machine gun. Suddenly, enemy fire killed Zukovsky and injured my father, which is why he never boxed again. My uncle jumped out of the gun turret, ran to the cockpit, and managed to pilot the plane to safety. Oh. The times my father told me that story. And now... You still have your uncle. Yes, I guess you're right. Maybe he can also save me. Did you ever meet Mitchell, the doctor? Mitchell? The lizard? No, never. Why? Oh, nothing. I think I've seen him somewhere. Did you ever meet Spano? What can you tell me about him? I think I saw him once, but I was just a little girl. I think my uncle turned him into a star. That was a long time ago. Are you cold? A little. Maybe I should go. Yeah, it's getting late. Anyway. Thanks for the company. Sonia, thank you. Aren't you coming? I knew I was looking at a solution, but what exactly needed solving? Hmm. Maybe Dunn used the same hiding place once more. I'll never understand why detectives and criminals bluster while they fight each other in the pictures. 
What a waste of breath, focus, and energy. It's not the lack of credibility in the screenplay that bothers me. Plus, it's actually pretty handy. When a crook talks to you in the middle of a fight, you know you're up against a rookie. I'll never understand why detectives and criminals bluster while they fight each other in the pictures. What a waste of breath, focus, and energy. It's not the lack of credibility in the screenplay that bothers me. Plus, it's actually pretty handy. When a crook talks to you in the middle of a fight, you know you're up against a rookie. And if he doesn't even say, help me please, What did they say? Nothing serious. I lost another one of my nine lives. Oh, this hurts. Got many left? I'm in the red. <sighs> he hasn't woken up yet? Nope. We're gonna be here a while. Vulpine. Seven letters. Scheming? Hmm. You think that's the same thing? No, no, no. Sounds a bit off to me. Wait, I know. Vulpine, seven letters. Cunning. What are you looking for? Nothing. Will he live? He'll live. So what have you found out? Randall Lee. Apparently in love with our penitentiary system, judging by the frequency of his visits. Theft, assault, extortion. You know, minor things of the sort. Any partners? Always works alone. He's never ratted out his employers, provided they exist. Did you find anything? Is this our man? Do you have proof?
Hmm. It looks like we know who tore his pants following Mary Purnell up to the rooftop. His pants have a tear in them. I found a piece of that same fabric at the gym, on the stairs that lead to the rooftop where we found the second body. Makes sense, but how many pairs of ripped pants are walking around New York City? <laughs> I don't call that evidence. The guy who broke into the gym in Dunn's place has a thing for sardines. Did you smell his breath? Right, because there's only one sardine fanatic on this side of the Hudson. I need something more. I saw footprints from those very same shoes next to both the gym murders. Unless you're telling me that shoe is a limited edition, I'm gonna need something else. One of the thugs that attacked me the other night had a snout just like his. I'm sorry, but you can't incriminate someone based solely on species. What else you got? What more do you need? I've given you four pieces of evidence. None of which are conclusive. He tried to throw me off the rooftop. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. He's our man. No, he's not our man. Make up your mind. He's just a puppet. Someone is pulling his strings. Hmm. Could it be Yale? He's hiding something for sure, but I don't think he did it. By the way, was he discharged? His room is empty. They let him out yesterday. He's in police custody now. You can tell he's an athlete. Made quite the comeback. Anyone else would have taken ten times as long. Anyway. He better be fine. You know they've ordered me to escort him to Madison Square Garden on the day of the fight. Yeah, I heard something of the sort. What have you heard? Frank Cassidy. He's friends with the governor. You don't say. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Quick, what do you want? Good cop or bad cop? I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Good thing someone took out the trash. <laughs> 
Good morning, Mr. Lee. I assume you're aware that you're about to be accused of murder, and that thanks to the witness testimonies of Mr. Blacksad and Miss Dunn, your future is not looking too good. Go to hell, you dog. I swear that if I catch you outside, you'll wish you were in hell. Blacksad, stay out of this. Remember who's the cop here. Maybe we can offer you a deal. We know someone hired you to kill Joe Dunn and Mary Purnell. What do you have to say? I'll call your bluff. You ain't got nothing. If you tell us who hired you, we'll help you. Uh, yeah, sure. What can you offer me? How much is your life worth to you? Don't pay attention to him, Mr. Lee. We aren't vigilantes. But we can significantly reduce your sentence. You're pathetic. Is that why you never got in the police force, Black said? Did you fail the good cop, bad cop test? I won't say a word. And believe me, you stand to lose. Care for a piece of advice? If I were you, I'd fear for my life. I'm afraid that... Whoa! Watch out! I'm afraid that... Whoa! Watch out! I'm afraid that... Whoa! Watch out! Luckily, Smirnov's wound wasn't as bad as Randall's. Unfortunately, the police found nothing on the nearby rooftops. Our best shot at finding the killer was gone, so I went back to my previous lead. It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. I loved reading stories about pirates, so my father drew a treasure map for me. I searched the whole house one clue at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a, a tire swing.
Hello, Smirnoff residents. You're Excellent. dead! No, I got you with my lasso! Can you quiet down, kids? Don got killed for stirring the hornet's nest. And you confessed your crime! Kids, please. He'd been investigating athletes for months, including Helen Moore and Al Stone, among others. Mm -hmm. Dunn's notes aren't all that clear, and I'm not sure what he was after. Mm. But I'd say we're facing a widespread corruption case. Well, if you're right, that could be some dangerous evidence. Bring it here ASAP. Sure, but there's something important that I need to finish first. I wanted to follow a certain lead on my own before Smirnov had the chance to see anything. According to his notebook, Dunn had seen Craig Spano at Sam's diner just four days before his death. Get out of here, pussy! I have some questions for you. Oh, well, maybe I don't have answers for a pussy. It might have been easier to slap the information out of him, but I decided to trust in a universal truth. Everyone is guilty of something. You don't know who I am, right? Don't know and don't care. Come on, spit it out. I'm John H. Blackmore, public health inspector. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> there are some real freaks around here, so I have to be firm, you know? Have you eaten? Dinner's on the house. After you answer my questions. Sure, go ahead. Your call. Always at your disposal, Inspector. Ask away. Fear turned him soft and made him talk. Sure enough, Don had been there a few days back with a chimpanzee who matched Spano's description. Apparently, the guy still lived with his father. Don said he couldn't stay there a day more. For the time being, he would move into his place. Wait a minute. What does public health services have to do with that chimp? We worked together at the Consumer Protection Office. He came in pretending to be a client, and you insulted him. Me? Well, I barely even talked to him. Which is even worse. Dunn had taken Spano to his place. I wanted to believe that when Randall Lee broke into the apartment, Spano fled to his former address. But where could that be?
got you. If the living have rich and poor neighborhoods, so do the dead. In the mid-nineteenth century, Greenwood became the resting place to the city's most distinguished citizens. Thinkers, scientists, writers, inventors, artists, businessmen, politicians, police officers, thieves, pimps, and murderers. Here lie the bodies of the soulless minds that raised New York from the ground up. Now you know where to go to become somebody in the Big Apple. A Celtic cross. Supposedly, the ring keeps the devil at bay by reflecting the sunlight. Really handy at this time of the day. According to the book I found at Dunn's place, Fans of the sport leave baseballs on Bradwick's tomb to pay their respects. It's strange that I don't see any. Maybe they're gone with the wind, or somebody claimed them as part of their inheritance. It'd be even better with a skull between the bats. Still hot. the four bases guarding their father. I've never trusted angels. When they fall,
they turn into demons. I've always been a New York Warriors fan, although, to be honest, they're not what they used to be. Yep, they just haven't been the same without Craig Spano. I found a baseball glove at Joe Dunn's place, a glove signed by a great star. I couldn't believe my luck. I'm investigating a case of sports corruption. I think a considerable amount of athletes are involved, both current celebrities and former stars. you. I'm John Blackside, private investigator. How's Joe? One question at a time. It's my turn. Your turn. Why did you meet with Joe Dunn? Because he was looking for me. He came here one morning, but I was uh, too embarrassed to come down because he left a baseball with his initials on, on by the tombstone. Sam Steiner, tomorrow, 12.30 a.m. Because he, he knew they want to kill me. What did he want from you? And who wants to kill you? One question at a time. How's Joe? What would happen if I told him the truth? Would he lose it? Could I take that chance? Joe Dunn is dead. Murdered. I told you, Joe! How did it happen? One question at a time. My turn. Thank you. 
What did Dunn want from you? He wanted to know who was playing dirty in the sporting business. Dirtier than usual, that is. Wrecked lives, careers, ruined at the top of the game. He wanted to know if the same had happened to me. He wanted to know if the end of my career and my disappearance had anything to do with all that. He wanted me to confirm who was behind it all. The guy who had him killed. Our old friend, the surgeon. Is Mitchell the surgeon? Is he the person behind all of this? That surgeon you mentioned, is he? My turn. I want to know why I should trust you. Do it for Joe Dunn, our common friend. It's my turn. That surgeon that you mentioned, is he in this photo I got here? Ow! Hey! Ah. Uh. Hey, that toss was... Huh? Both my ear and my self-esteem would hurt for days. But at least I had a new lead to follow. The surgeon. The bastard had avoided my scrutiny by passing as a hospital doctor. But now, all of my senses were on guard. No matter how good the disguise or how well he hid, I would find him. 